Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll see how to push the code to GitHub and configure the Jenkins. So basically here we'll upload the code to the GitHub and then we will run on Jenkins. Now this thing I've done in my last project as well, but here I'm going to add few more things in Jenkins. That's my main focus is that here I'll see how to schedule the codes. And in my next video, I'll see how to add pipelines to our code, basically how to put the items in pipeline, we'll see that as well. So this is something new that we are adding to Jenkins, but we have not done it before. So the very first thing we'll do is we'll upload the code to GitHub. So now, you know, uploading the code to GitHub is quite easy. So what you have to do is just, you have to create a repository. So I'm going to create a repository with e-commerce project name. Now I've created a repository with this name. I go back to my Eclipse. In Eclipse, just this is our e-commerce project. So I just do right click, go to team, share project, select the repository from here. So I select the last repository. I do finish. Now from here, again, I go to team. Again, I go to commit. Now this process, you have seen it before as well. So we are doing it again. Now in this, unstake changes, you'll find all of these files, drag and drop it here as usual. Now then write the commit message. Frameworks code, I'm writing. Frameworks upload. Now after that, do commit and push. Now usually you get this message, so ignore this. Again, click on push. Now this is the origin. So what you have to do is get back to your GitHub, copy the GitHub link from here as it's copied. Now go and paste it here in URI. Now, as usual, I'm going to give my username, but in case of password, when it comes to password, we are not going to give the password. Instead, we are going to generate a token. So from here, I go to the setting option. From setting, I go to developer setting. From developer setting, I go to this personal access token. From there, I go to token classic. From there, I do generate new token. Now, once the token to generate token, I say I'm generating token for e-commerce. So I give a notes here, then click on this repo. Next time, click on project. Now do generate token. Now this, I've already created a video to how to upload on GitHub. So you'll get that link as well along with this video. And also I've created, I've done this before in the last project. So this is something that's quite similar and everyone knows how we do this. And I've done this before it as well. So I'm doing it a little bit faster than as usual. Now this is my project, cool. So here, this is my password, the token. I do preview, again, I click preview, and I do push. Now, as usual, it's going to ask the details again. Put the password over here, do login, and the code is post. Now, as usual, just disconnect from your GitHub. So you do team, disconnect, Get back here, go to your repository. This is your e-commerce project, open this. And you see inside this, you have the complete thing here. Now the complete project is uploaded here to this e-commerce. That's great. Now what's our next step? The next step is about Jenkins. Now here I'm not going to talk about everything in Jenkins because already we have done this, but still I'll tell you a few things like those who are new to this video, how to download Jenkins. It's very simple. Just write download Jenkins and click the very first link that is Jenkins download and deployment. From here, go to generic Java package, that's WAR file. So you need to click on this generic Java package. This will help you to do click download the WAR files. So the WAR is extension for Jenkins files. So we have to download this. I've already downloaded, so I'm not doing it again. Now, once it's downloaded, it goes to your download folder. 
Now for the very first time user, when it's downloaded, it will generate some password and that password, you have to use it for the very first time. Then you have to download, configure the Jenkins. All of this I have done in my videos. So you can see how this complete installation process, everything I've done it before. So that links I'll be passing it on in the, come, uh, in the description section. So you can watch the videos from there. Now let's start the Jenkins straight away. So I'm using the command prompt basically to run Jenkins. So I open my command prompt and knowingly that my jar files is in download section. So I do CD downloads and just I write a command line Java does jar Jenkins dot W A R. Now when I do this, this will start and at the end you'll get a message Jenkins is fully up and ready to use. So once you get that message, then you will come back to your Chrome and there we need to do a few things. Now, first mo few more things that you have to keep in mind here is that the project that you're running, it's a Maven project. And if you are using a Maven project, then in that case, you need to configure Maven in your Jenkins. Now this, I get this message, Jenkins is fully up and running. Now I get back here. To start Jenkins, I write localhost colon, see this localhost colon 8080. So when you write localhost colon 8080, it takes you to the Jenkins page. Click on sign in and you are into the Jenkins. Now, once you are into the Jenkins, now these steps I will tell you. Now you have to download Apache, uh, Maven Apache. Basically, you have to download the folders that also I've done in my last project, but still I will show you the locations, how I'm saving it. So you'll get an idea from there. So you have to do two things here. You have to download that Apache Maven. You have to set the path in environment variables. I'll show you this. So in environment variables, and remember when you are opening the environment variables, open the control panel, not your account. So when you open this, Then go to environment variables. In environment variables, you have to do two things. First, you have to set the path of Maven. Second, in the path section. So you see, I have set the path into different, twice I have explained this, so I have set the path twice. Now here in path also, what do you need to do? Open the path. And here also you need to set the path of Maven that I have done. So here you see, this is how I've set the path of Maven. Now these things you have to do at your own. Just this is the process I showed you. This is the locations that I'm passing it on here. Now in Jenkins, you have to just go to manage Jenkins. And here in manage Jenkins, you need to go and check whether the, the Git and the, Ma the Apache Maven path is set or not. So when you go to tools here, so before this, uh, sorry, you have to go to the plugins as well. So in plugins, in available plugins, in my case, it's installed plugins. So in install plugins, I'll see Maven integration plugin. This is already installed in my case. In your case, you'll go to available plugins. You'll search for Maven integration. Once you get Maven integration, you need to install that and then done. Again, get back to your manage Jenkins section. This time go to tools. Now, in this tools, you need to set the path of first Git. So that means you have to download Git as well. And this is the location of my Git in my system. So how to download Git? So in my last frameworks video, the very last video, you will see all these steps I've done there. So I'm just showing you at least it will be a recall thing for you. Now, first I've set the path of Git, then you can set the path of Maven as well. So you basically here, you see I've set the path of Maven as well. So you have to do the same. Download the Maven, store in the program files, set the path, and it's done. So by doing this, the Maven, the gate, both is configured. Now I'll get back to my dashboard. I'll go to new item. Now Maven integration is important because when you are creating a project or when you are creating an item, you need to select this option Maven project. And this is available only once you install Maven or once you integrate Maven in your project, then only you will have this thing. Click on Maven project, do OK. So when you do this, this will take you to the Jenkins section. Now in Jenkins section, you have to do two things here. 
you need to integrate git here so go to source code management click on git you need to enter the url of git repository so that to get the url of git repository go back to your github come to this code copy the github link from here paste it over here that's all now once this is done come down the project that you have uploaded the branch of this project is master you see if it's main in your case put main if it's master put master now the next thing what you have to do here is you need to configure this thing the root pom xml so in my case the root pom xml is inside from here it's like you see this code gives you location till e-commerce project so here if i do slash pom dot xml so this will work because just have to add this step and from here if i open this pom dot xml so what's my extension this e-commerce project slash pom dot xml so straight away it will come here and here in you see in this case here in xml file suit i have defined testng.xml so this will run testng.xml if you have stored the project inside the folder so give the project folder name first in github if it's inside certain folder so give the folder name first and then give slash pom.xml in my case pom.xml is straight away fixed so it will add to the current location so that's not a problem i'll do here save night safe once it's saved just go click on build now and just to see the steps what's happening click on this drop down now here something goes wrong maybe the location so maybe i have to give the project name as well so yeah it's the problem with the location it says that e-commerce project dot git it's not taking the straight away so again i'll go back to the e-commerce the place where i was saying that in pom.xml you don't need to give the folder name so here you have to because it's taking only the git location so here you have to give the project name as well so you see no such file slash pom.xml so i go back i take the project name as well this is my project name copy paste it here or just remove this thing from here i hope this will work now yeah I don't need to give the forward slash. I've given the forward slash. That was a problem. So now pom.xml is file. Now, again, I said, if you are not inside certain folder, you don't need to give this forward slash and pom. If you are inside certain folder, give the folder name and then give forward slash pom.xml. If you are straight away inside the project, like here you see e-commerce project is the name of the repository and straight away these folders are here. So I have to just pass this pom.xml. In test and option, I write details like test i do save this and now let me do build now again so again this thing is built let me go to the console output and see this time what's happening now you see the code is straight away running from here so you see the pom.xml file is triggered the project is executed and at the end once the project is done i'll get the status as build success whatever the status is. So the complete project is executing. So let's sit and watch. How is it working? So you see on start method invoked. Now the project will invoke. The complete execution is done. Now till here you are familiar with, if you are watching my video again, so I hope you are familiar till here. The next step that I'm going to add, that's something new. And that's new that I'm adding to Jenkins. So we'll see that. Now here I have just passed multiple credentials. So it's taking this way. It's like, fine. Now it's done, OK? So here, basically, the XML file that I passed, that's not the complete stage that will pass. So it's fine. Till here, it's good. Now, this is triggered. Now I'll go back to my dashboard. So the small changes, and again, I'll do here, I'll go to configure. So just remember about this Git path and all, what exactly how you have to set the Git path. So maybe if you'll have confusion here, always keep in mind that if straight away it's inside the repository, I'm not going to give any extension. 
in case of define in case we are defining this pom.xml if this is inside the folder then i'll give the folder name whatever it is i'll give this forward slash and then i'll read that pom.xml file so just this is small thing because everywhere when you are uploading the projects to github you have different ways or the projects are uploaded in different ways so this thing you have to always keep in mind now the next thing what i was talking about is scheduling now this is very interesting so scheduling you will find it inside the build triggers and inside build triggers you'll find this option as build periodically now here you need to understand the features of scheduling what exactly the scheduling is and how we place the scheduling so just when you click on this question mark it gives you a detailed study of this now i'll explain you this in very short you see the first thing what we have to mention is minute the second is hour then date month and day of week now this two will mention the way we are it's like it's 212 right now so i'm going to mention first minute so i'll mention it as 15 or i think i'll mention it as 40 no 15 is good now hour two hours now this two date month and the day of week now this if you want to specify with certain date with certain month then mention that particular date and month number if not you want to randomly run it then you see how you place first mention this give spaces between them so i give space between this first star is for now this means the current day first is for day of month second is for month and the third one will be for day of week so this is how you will pass things so basically now you don't need to pass these details or like here specifically you don't need to mention all now when you do this here you'll see it's invalid mismatch it says now here you see 3 so i have to just give 3 so it's mentioned that okay this will run at 2:15 10 am indian standard time so everything is mentioned april 17 2024 so by this you get a clear idea that you have scheduled at this particular time now i see it's 2:14 right now so just let's wait for this change to happen it's like let's wait for this to change to 2:15 and you see without touching without doing anything this particular project will schedule so now the use of this is right now if i am working and if you want that someone should check or this thing should be triggered by itself in the morning so just you have to set this timings and all or any time you want to set just pass that time and at that particular time this particular project will be triggered so this is the first thing that you will learn that how we are scheduling the project so here you see at 215 you see by itself this is scheduled so i'm doing nothing and this project is scheduled so that's the story how we schedule a test case in jenkins So you see, there are many uses of Jenkins. This is one of that. That here I can schedule. So anyone in team can go and trigger that. So it's like you'll say that okay, I'll schedule at that particular time. You go and test your test cases, or just test everything at that particular time. So he will go and test everything. You see, the complete process is scheduled. Now next time the credentials which I am passing, it's not valid. So I have passed here multiple credentials, and it's a data-driven type of concept. So it's executing that way. So this is called scheduling a test case, and this is very useful. And this is how the schedule process works. Just you have to understand the structure, and you can set your own schedules. That's the one thing that I've added in the Jenkins section. Now, in next video, we'll talk about the pipelines and see more things related to Jenkins. That's all in this video. See you next video. Keep watching. Till then, bye bye. Thank you.